high heart rate not only feels uncomfortable, but if left untreated and it keeps happening repeatedly, this could lead to health problems down the line. In today's video, we'll be talking about some of the lifestyle factors that are keeping your heart rate elevated, as well as things that you can do quickly right now in order to lower your heart rate, as well as a more of a long-term plan as to how to decrease it more permanently. Welcome to HRV Hackers. If you're somebody who enjoys research-based advice on how to improve your health, I would love to have you join me as a subscriber. Nothing in this video is medical advice. I always check with your doctor before implementation, especially if you have a medical condition. So what are some of the things we need to be on the lookout for when we are dealing with high heart rate? The first is checking our electrolyte levels. We want to make sure that our electrolytes such as magnesium, calcium, potassium are all in optimal ranges because your heart requires them in order to work properly, as well as uh, keep your blood pressure in good range as well. While potassium and calcium are relatively easy to obtain from a normal diet, magnesium tends to not be, and a lot of people tend to be deficient in magnesium. So supplementation is key with something like magnesium bisglycinate. Low levels of magnesium are associated with atrial fibrillations and heart arrhythmias if you need any extra motivation to start supplementing with magnesium right now. Sedentary lifestyles. Sedentary behaviors where we're doing things like sitting all day with barely any movement could lead to heart shrinkage and stiffening of the arteries. So research suggests that it's best to set a timer and try to move around in approximately 30 minutes every hour especially while you're sitting at your work and focusing on your laptop. What is the minimal amount of minutes per day you should aim to move? Approximately 70. And of course, you should always try to do more if you can. Food allergies and food sensitivities. Do you feel like crap after some meals? Does your heart rate also spike during or after those meals? You could be having some food sensitivities or food allergies. The problem with a lot of food and diet-based advice is it's too generic. Somebody's health food is somebody else's food sensitivity and food allergy. For me, it's things like avocados, cauliflower, broccoli, all cause food issues right now. How did I discover this? I have a continuous heart rate and heart rate variability monitor, which made it super easy to put two and two together. As soon as I would eat, let's say an avocado, within a couple of minutes, my heart rate was already spiking to 115. So if you haven't invested in a continuous heart rate variability and heart rate monitor, I would highly, highly, highly recommend you do. Caffeine. Why do some people feel amazing, energized, supercharged after a cup of coffee or tea, while others feel anxious, get stomach issues, have insomnia, and have a huge heart rate spike that just doesn't go down? The research suggests that a lot of people are slow caffeine metabolizers. And what that means is that caffeine could stay in your system for 12 or even more hours and cause all sorts of issues. Whereas if somebody was a fast metabolizer, caffeine exits their system quickly and they just get all the beautiful benefits of caffeine. So how do you know if you're a fast or a slow metabolizer? You would use a service like 23andMe that will give you a genetic test and let you know some of these results. Medical conditions. There are many medical conditions such as an underactive thyroid, that are putting a lot of strain on your physiology and thereby raising your heart rate. So in addition to going to your regular doctor, I would also suggest having yourself checked out by a functional doctor because they're very focused on figuring out what the root cause of your medical condition is and helping you resolve it via more natural means. Is sodium keeping your heart rate high? Now I'm not talking about this sodium, the real salt. I'm talking about the cheap stuff that you'll find in packaged foods, in restaurants. That stuff will increase your blood pressure unnecessarily and keep your heart rate high. Smoking and alcohol. I'm sure you're not surprised at all to find them on this list of factors that will raise your heart rate and keep it high. So whether you continue to do these practices is completely up to you. Constant grazing. Unfortunately, a lot of dietitians still give the advice that we should be having six, eight, God knows how many meals a day. The problem with this is that whenever we have a meal, depending on the meal size, the heart has to send more blood to our digestive system. 
which will of course elevate your heart rate. These meals also spike insulin. So I would encourage you to experiment with having less meals to see if it helps. More modern research suggests having between one and three total meals a day. That's it. Exercise. Is your exercise routine keeping your heart rate high for days? When we're exercising, it's very easy to fall into the trap of trying to go as high intensity as we can handle for as long as we can handle. There's a lot of research that suggests that we should also be spending time in aerobic zones. For example, where you can still be having a conversation while working out. So it's not just about pushing yourself and pushing yourself nonstop. So while I still recommend practices like HIIT training, especially if your physiology can handle it, it's also important to look into things like zone two training and related practices like DFA alpha one training. I will link links to practices like this in the video description. These are, are more aerobic, gentler exercises done for longer, which have been clinically shown to lower heart rate. Chronic mouth breathing, as well as chest breathing, keeps our nervous system in sympathetic mode, aka fight or flight mode, which will of course keep our heart rate elevated. Mouth breathing has a ton of other health issues associated with it when done in the long term. So I would definitely encourage you to check out some of the research done by the team at Oxygen Advantage, which talks about the benefits of nose breathing and the detrimental effects of mouth breathing. I'll leave a link in the description. All right, and now we're gonna talk about things that we can do in this moment, right now, as well as more long-term strategies in order to keep our heart rate lower. First, let's talk about what happens if we're in crisis mode and we need to lower heart rate right away. So first, I want you to lie down because being in a reclined position puts less strain on your heart. Second, I want you to get a paced breathing app. I will link some down below for free. And you can use that to pace your breathing at the following rates. The recommended rates are either five second inhale, five second exhale, and some people will benefit from a four second inhale and a six second exhale. And I want you to just follow this breathing pattern until you're able to calm down your nervous system. Now, in addition, some other things you can do to lower your heart rate right away are taking an ice pack from your freezer and putting it on the left side of your neck and just keeping it there. And also, there's some specific music that was made to lower anxiety in particular. And there's a free track by Marconi Union where I will put the link in the description for it. Now give this a try and let me know how combining all of these techniques together helped lower your heart rate. Next, I wanna talk about hydration. If you're not properly being hydrated, your heart rate will be high. And actually some people, even though they drink a lot of water, will still remain dehydrated. And this is because they need to be taking extra electrolytes that you can just order from Amazon. And then you should start seeing a difference in both your heart rate and energy levels after you start being properly hydrated. Intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting has tons of benefits to your health and longevity. And while there's many different ways to do it, my personal favorite is 16-8, where you eat during an eight hour window and you completely stop eating during a 16 hour window. So I would encourage you to give this one a try and see if it keeps your heart rate low. And if that doesn't help, try other ways to fast and see if that helps. Bedtime. Is the time you go to sleep causing your heart rate to be high the next day? An interesting observational study was done with Fitbit users that showed that users who maintain a consistent going to sleep schedule, let's say at 12 a.m., and they maintain that window within approximately 30 minutes, and they don't stray too much from that, had normal heart rates, and users that did not maintain this time window ended up having a high heart rate the next day. Meditation. If you need yet another reason to either start a meditation practice or maintain a meditation practice, and you're currently dealing with high heart rates, here it is. Meditation will lower your heart rate. And as a bonus, the Muse headband, which is one of the best ways to learn how to meditate, comes with a feature that teaches you how to lower your heart rate via breath, via biofeedback. 
All right, guys. Well, hope that was helpful. And if you have tips on how to lower your heart rate that I didn't mention, feel free to leave them as a comment. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.